saunas. So the claim, big one from saunas, this is like the big bro science claim, is that they help you lose weight. And you'll often see people sat in the sauna, trying to like grind it out, tolerating as long as they can, because they think it's going to help with their weight loss. I think you'll know that's obviously box because what's that doing for your calorie expenditure? Nothing. You're just being uncomfortable for a while. That's not to say that saunas are useless overall, but it's for a fat loss purpose, you've just got to manage your calorie balance, eat less food, expend more calories. What's cool about saunas is that there's actually a whole host of multi-system benefits that aren't really talked about. So this ranges from mood enhancement, improving cardiovascular conditioning and cardiometabolic benefits. So improving your blood lipid profile, detoxification of stuff that gets accumulated in the cells. So we're going to talk about estrogen a bit later, but there are some environmental sources of estrogen and plastics and microplastics that can't be metabolized in the liver and they just get stuck in fat cells. And sauna and sweating is a good way to actually clear that. It's an effective means of excreting that stuff. And we have seen stuff in some data of symptomatic improvements from people that have had toxins uh, accumulating in them. Quite an interesting study of the firemen and building recovery people who helped out after September the 11th, 2001, that started to develop what they thought was a Parkinsonian tremor, but obviously they were way too young to be developing that. And some guy, some surgeon took them through this sauna protocol with a couple of additional things. And the towels were like stained with purple residue. And it turned out that what they'd done is they'd inhaled manganese and they developed manganese toxicity. And the sauna had helped them to actually clear it out. Wow, that is incredible. That's, I wonder who thought, let's trial that as a... My question used to would be how frequently we have to engage in the duration of the sauna itself, but how frequently we would have to be doing that. Because again, you see now people buy those kind of portable saunas for their garden, or you can get like a little shed thing versus me who might go to the spa once every couple of months, sit in, decide they think it's too hot after a couple of minutes and leave. I'm going to guess that isn't going to be net positive to my, to my health. Yeah. Unfortunately to get the benefits that you see in the data, the cardiometabolic benefits, the improvement in running time to exhaustion, pretty cool, but the, to induce the heat shock proteins and get these multi-system benefits, you do need to, it's quite a rigorous protocol that they put them through. I think it was 30 minutes, three times a week or thereabouts. That's which, a long time. It's yeah. not, I don't find them that comfortable. I don't, you mentioned there about improving your cardiovascular. I find my breathing gets really shallow when I'm in, is that just pure cardiovascular health? It might also just be that the air is quite thick, isn't it? But yeah. it's, I do think anecdotally that women tolerate heat worse than men. I don't we know if that's that to do with- extra layer, the... don't we? We have that extra layer of fat on us, don't we? Does that do anything? Possibly, or maybe just the resting temperature. No idea. I just but think I, I you're should... a little bit more stubborn. So you're like, I've committed to this sauna. I'm going to sit in here for half an hour until I've shriveled. But that is a good point. I know you mentioned it's lab that points, off. isn't it? Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. How how can I? How much room can I take up in this chamber? And how long can I sit here? You've seen the men, the ones that I particularly. The yeah. I know you mentioned and you caveated this about weight loss, but it is a practice that the likes of your boxers will use. But just to say, they are doing that to drop scale weight for a very short period of time i've got a bottle of water here as soon as you're consuming that after you know you're gonna be it's just dehydration isn't it yeah if you want to dehydrate yourself for whatever reason i wouldn't recommend it it's very dangerous to try and dehydrate yourself but people even exercise in the sauna don't they 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 will exercise in saunas to to get down to those weights doesn't sound yeah. pleasant i don't even like to sit in them um, i agree the risk reward ratio is not worth it and one one thing i should say just final point about lad points is that it can reduce sperm motility over time so it's a reversible thing so once you stop using the sauna we've seen that sperm motility and number comes up again but just something to bear in mind that's really interesting so cold showers are going to increase your testosterone unfortunately it's claimed that that's the case but they acutely reduce testosterone so as well testosterone is not having an easy ride of it at the moment is not it it's because you your balls are outside your body not your balls but one one's balls are outside the body to maintain a very kind of narrow range of temperature so if you mess with it they don't function optimally